the Daily Gospel Network, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ every day. Join our featured ministry for happiness, healing, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us as we proclaim God's love and help you step into your season. Coming up on the Daily Gospel Network. Welcome church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. We want to share with you, yeah, in your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in the streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with oh, one touch ministries. We're here for you right now. My brother, and so he wouldn't mind me saying this. Hit your like and hit your heart for pastors. Yes. And today. <laughs> Make sure hit you your share, likes share, and share, hit your share. heart if you love them. You say, I don't necessarily know them. You know me. And if you know me, you know them. If you know my wife, if you know that, oh, I see you. I see you. Pastor Chanel is hitting it. Yes. Pip, uh, those that are of my congregation, my aunt Sabrina's here. Sister All Lita right. Coddington is here. Glory to God. We are excited about you. We are excited about you guys. You too are making a mighty difference. Hear me now, not just in your region, but also around the world. Ah, there are ah. people that have called you to that are called to be local. There are people that are called to do local works, and we appreciate every single last one of them. But you all are regional men and women of God. And so therefore, when the region comes under attack, God would use you to cast things down, and God will use you to build things up. And I hear the Holy Ghost say very unassuming, very unassuming your unassuming ways it's at you are flying at an altitude and where the holy ghost will be able to use you but don't get too comfortable say is the lord for i am taking you higher i am causing people to turn and say there they are i've heard about them i'm causing people to turn people of great influence i'm reminded of anna in the bible that was able to then transition once they met you there are people that are waiting Waiting to transition until they meet you. There are people that will not be able to go to certain levels until they meet you. And so I release great grace, not just locally, but regionally. That's why the pain and that's why the tears, but I decree and declare that great joy and great peace is coming to you today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Come on, if you believe that, viewers, help me honor these two with your likes and heart up in here up in here i thank you my dear brother and sister for this opportunity to speak to some fathers and if you are a father then you are therefore as a default a leader you're a father and you're a leader but the problem is there might not have been a manual that was provided to you, Father. There might not have been a manual provided to you, male. There might not have been a manual that was provided to you. And there you are. You find yourself oftentimes as a father, as a leader, as a male, fighting a devil that you can't see. My God. Fighting and trying to navigate your way into a man and a male that was never there. I know that pain. I can, I can concur with that pain for perhaps I may look good to you tonight. Perhaps I may have a, a title in front of my name, but somewhere 
inside of me, there was a boy, a 16 year old boy, the year in which a male would need his dad. There is a holiday, ladies and gentlemen, in my country called Cop Match. Mm. Uh, it's a day in where two days straight, prophetess, two days straight, pastor, my country pauses, relaxes, and plays cricket. They wow. play a game cricket for two days straight, and it's a holiday for all of us. Excited as we are, we prepare everything we need to prepare in order to experience it. Days and months in advance, we go back and forth because one side of the island is playing the other side of the island. Whoever wins the game will win the cup. But on this particular cup match in 1999, it wouldn't feel like a win for me, but rather it would be a loss because 1999, on the first day of the holiday of cup match, I lost my father. My father, my father, whom, who I have to hear his name every time my name is called because my name is his name, Eldridge. It would be me and him the night before he passed, ladies and gentlemen, and where he'll be hanging out around the house for you see, he was my friend and I was his friend and this night would confirm it because he was messing with his bike. He was playing with his uh, uh, motorbike. He was fixing some things and we were hanging out together like friends do. And that would be the day where I would ask him up out of the blue, perhaps pro prophetic. I said to him, daddy, if you were to die, who would you give your bike to? He said to me, you, LJ, Eldridge Jr., you, LJ. I'll give my bike to you if I was to pass away. I asked him prophetically, perhaps, I said, Dad, I said, who's your best friend? He says, without even a second to think about it, he says, you, you're my best friend, LJ. You are my best friend, and I'll give my bike to you if I was to pass away. Little did I know that that prophecy would come to pass less than 24 hours for you see, my father, he worked shift work. The next day was a holiday, but because of the kind of business that he was in, he would go to work in the day. And of course, I just finished today before getting on this live because I want to be balanced for my children. I took my children today to a beach, me and him and a couple of our other friends we went to a beach on that day, but it'll be the beach that I would leave alive and he would leave dead. In Bermuda, we have something called docks. And so on this dock, Shannon, you're able to jump off. And we was just down from my grandmother's house and he was jumping off. I was jumping off. The men that we were with, we were jumping off. And in the distance, there was another island. There was another island that we all decided, you know what, it's not that long. He loved to swim. He had just gotten off of work. He drove down. He rode down on that same bike. We drove well, we swam together to the other island. We're sitting there. We all have made it to the other island. We're having ourselves a wonderful blast. As I'm looking at you, I'm looking back in Bermuda because we're on an island that's in the waters of Bermuda. It's in Bermuda, but we're not on the mainland. He's in front of me looking. I'm behind him looking. And all of a sudden, I begin to see his body fall into the water. Now, usually you and I would move had it been on land, but you see my water in Bermuda is crystal clear. And oftentimes we would go down and we would look and see. And so of course we didn't think nothing of it. And so we thought he was down there as playful as he was looking at the bottom of the ocean, looking at beautiful coral reef, looking at so many beautiful things not knowing that it's quite possible he was looking at Jesus. 
One person would jump off to go back to the mainland, Bermuda. Another person would jump off. It would be my turn to jump off, Pastor Shannon. And I would look over before it was time for me to jump off. I would look and I'll say, look at my dad, you guys. I said, daddy. And the way how he was, he wasn't down too far. You still should be able to hear somebody calling your name. I get ready to jump and I said, daddy. The second time, certainly he should have answered me by now. I run over. Now these are, these are very, these are, uh, babe, maybe you can help me out. I wanna get this. I don't want this to turn off on me, baby. If you can get this computer started, I don't want nobody to miss this. You guys can hear me, yes? Yes. Hallelujah. There we are now. I'm saying, Daddy, these rocks are sharp, Pastor Shannon. They're very, very sharp. But when adrenaline, you know this all too well, prophetess, when adrenaline is running through you for a family member, especially, you get the strength from another world. I run barefoot on sharp rocks. I pick my father up and He's in my arms and he's, he's looking up, looking past me. He held me when I came into the world. Wow. Here I am, 16 years old. The time that I need a father holding him when he's exiting out of the world. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I call out, I say, help me, help me. My, the other men who I was with got him. I go to the back, I begin to start crying. And all of a sudden, up out of nowhere, he comes back to, he looks around. He had not known what, had ha what has happened to him. I need to pause to somebody today. I need to pause to a man that was close to their father. I need to pause to someone that's lost their mother. And I need to let you know that while you might think it was painful, it was a wonderful experience, death. I'm talking about that word that we do not like to say oftentimes, but it was a wonderful experience because my father came back to and he didn't know what had happened to him. The last thing he remembered, we was going back to the mainland of Bermuda. He comes back to, he then is looking at Bermuda. He looks over at me, he sees me crying. And the last thing I would hear my father say to me is, it's all right, Jay, Eldridge Jr. It's all right, Jay. Here's what he said. He said, everything it's gonna be all right. In this section, there's never a boat, but I'm reminded that Abraham, and he needed some sort of relief. It was a ram in a thick and just happens to be on this holiday where there's never a boat. A boat was there. We beckoned over to this boat to come. The boat was coming. It was while the boat was coming, he came back through. He uttered his last words to me. He gets on the boat, not knowing why we were not swimming back. He just puts on the, 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 the protective gear, gets on the boat, not sure what happens I go to the front of the boat he's now looking back at the island while we're on the boat going to the mainland and yet again my uncle and my father is stand, sitting next to each other my uncle Reed his wife is on your live today my father's body begins to go limp again this time never to return leader father Male, I know what it's like to have to lead when you don't know exactly how to do it. I know what it's like to cry out for a male figure and you don't know whether they want to use you for your gift. You don't know what their ulterior motive is. I know what it's like to be used by other males, not in a way that is derogatory, but I know what it's like when you happen to be good at something. I know what it's like to be a David when a Saul is trying to take advantage of you. I know what it's like to try to be married and I was married and I am married, but I know what it's like to have your wife look at you and say, what is it that we're going 
to eat. What are we going to eat tonight? What do you do? Only we males, we would understand this. Please don't take no offense, ladies. I'm just speaking to this target audience here. What do you do when your wife looks at you like you're her father? Wow. And, you, and you don't have an answer for her. What do you do? You know what I'm talking about, uh, husband. You know what I'm talking about, father. When your children are looking at you, you don't have an answer for them, but you have to stand there and do your best not to lie and perhaps lie so that peace would come upon them. I know what it's like not to have it in the bank, but you have to act like you do. I know what it's like, sir, I, to, to promise a great Christmas and not know if you're going to be able to buy the presents. I know what it's like, sir, to promise a good birthday and not know if you're going to be able to have more than just a cake to buy. I know what it's like, and I'm here to let you know you are not alone. I'm here to let you know you're not a bad father. You're not a bad person. You're not a bad husband. Maybe you're you're just fighting a battle, Samson, while being blind. I Jesus. don't have an example. I don't have an example. When you take tests in school, you at least have time to, 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 for them to teach you how to do it. Even on the exam, oftentimes they give you an example up top and say, do it like this. Even when they're in English, when they're giving the sentence, they give an example with a line, but they give you the, and they tell you what it is. What do you do when there's no example being given? And all you're doing is going from day to day. I really sense in my spirit that there are some viewers that are watching me that are just going day to day and you really don't have an answer. You really don't have an answer. But I'm coming with good gospel news that God wants to restore some things into you, sir. God wants to restore some things into you. Hear me now. I would run oftentimes with my sister. And there was a time in where I would run with a cousin of mine. My cousin is named Anthea. And she told me of a time where she would run. Ah, uh, this will bless you. And she said she couldn't run the whole course. And so she ran from light post to light post. Then she walked from that post to the next post. She would run from that post to that post. Then she'll walk from that post to the next post. Sir, I'm not promising you anything by 10 o'clock tonight. I just want to compliment you for the first time in a hundred years that you're doing a good job right now. I'm not going to beat you for what you didn't do last night. I'm going to compliment you for what you're doing right, right now. I don't know what your life is going to look like at eight o'clock, but here at this particular time, in your particular time zone, first of all, let me say, sir, let me say, father, let me say, male, you're doing a good job. Let me say, pastor. Let me say, preacher. Let me say, apostle. Let me say, lawyer. Let me say, doctor. Oh, but I got alcohol on my breath. You're doing a good job. Oh, but I'm watching you with a cigarette in my mouth. You're doing a good job. You haven't done everything right. But what could you do when there has not been an example? And even when there was an example, what do I do? Hear me now. When my example has been taken away from me. Wow. Uh, he wants to restore some things in you, sir. He wants to restore some things. Here's what he told me. He's going to restore in this season if you just trust my voice. Trust my voice in the now. You might not be able to get through the end of this live, then go on the replay. Hear me now, if you're watching the replay, you might not be able to get to the end of it, but watch a little bit per day. Why am I saying that? Because I know what it's like to be depressed. 
and you cannot get through the whole sermon. Oh, Pastor mm -hmm. Shannon, Prophet is Naditra, I know what it's like to be depressed and to be heartbroken and ailing for things that are not happening. And I can only get by, oh Lord, have mercy. I can only get by, turn your Bibles to, and I got to shut it off because I'm so used to the dark that mm. the light hurts my eyes. Jesus. Uh, I want to shine, not a flashlight, uh, not a lantern. I simply want to give you a flicker of light, a flicker of hope. If you can get to this flicker of hope, go back to the dark, then look for it again. Get to the next flicker. Here it is. Here's the first word. He wants to give you the ability again to relax. A lot of times, stewardesses on planes, their, their job, prophetess, their job is more of an emotional one. Why? Because the pilot can tell you that you're getting ready to go through some turbulence and he can get away with it. Why? Because I don't even know what he or she looks like. But as long as the stewardess, as long as their face is at peace, then you are at peace. And so often, sir, you have been made to be a stewardess and a steward and a flight attendant because you know you don't got the money for the rent and you know that you ain't got the money for the mortgage and you know that you don't have the resources to pick up what it is that they need for school and you know you don't have it but you have been made to keep a straight face when the pilot told you we're going down. I know what it feels like, and sir, I know it sounds like a lie, but God told me he wants to give you the ability and restore your ability, not just to sleep, but your ability, I see you, Sister Penny, your ability to relax. The word lax means not sufficiently strict. It means severe or careful. And so he wants to take your lax, always ready, always anxious, always, but having to put on the mask because if you scare your wife and you tell your wife the whole truth, you know, I'm talking to some people who got some bad news and you don't know how you're going to tell your wife. I'm here to let you know that God is going to add a re to your lax. And he's going to cause you to no longer, ah, this is going to bless you, to no longer be a flight attendant, sir, but to be a passenger on a plane that you're doing everything in your power to stay afloat. I know what it's like to try to keep a plane that you don't know how to fly afloat. As long as the flight attendant is okay, Oftentimes, we, your family, is okay. But when you begin to unravel and unloose, then they begin to unravel and unloose. Perhaps mm -hmm. that's why you drink in the car and not at home. Wow. Perhaps that's why that marijuana tastes so good away from the house. Why? Because it's not... The, the cigarette, it's not the marijuana, it's not the alcohol, as much as it is the peace of the car. Uh, the peace of being in the car. I can remember just coming home when my boys were young. I don't know what's going on. Things are tough. I can remember coming home and not wanting to leave the car. I'm talking to some fathers. I'm talking to some husbands. I'm talking to some males. You just don't want to leave the car because you know full well, as soon as you get in the house, 
you're going to be made to put on a mask again that you have never been <laughs> made to view. You don't even know what you look like to your family. You just know you're taking it one step at a time. He's going to give you the ability to relax. Ah, take away the tension, take away the anxiousness. The second thing he said, prophet is in my dear brother, pastor, he said that I'm going, I want to give them the ability to relate again, to relate again. She don't like to touch you when the money ain't right, doesn't she? Mm -mm -mm. She don't like to show you intimacy when you don't give an answer for what you're going to eat for the next seven days. Ah. Hey everybody, this is Naditra Young. I am your master life coach. Listen, today I just want you to trust yourself. And you're probably saying, trust myself? Yes, I'm telling you to trust yourself because today you have an opportunity to receive the best help, the best care that you can possibly get at Win Academy. There's so many things that are going on in this world today and someone needs you to show up. More than anything, the people need you to be strong and courageous today. And you're probably saying, why strong? Why courageous? I'm going through so much. I understand. We're all facing a lot today. This is where Win Academy Master Life Coach Naditra Young comes in because I can help change your life. I can help you get some spiritual principles, some natural principles, and some life coaching. I, I'd be the one that you can sit and talk to and tell all your problems to. All right? So listen, I want you to be the one to join with us, Win Academy, so that you can win. You have the opportunity not only just to receive help, but if you say, listen, I don't need the help, but I love helping other people. Okay, connect with Win Academy, because why? I can get you certified as a master life coach. We have so many great opportunities here at Win Academy. You have the option today to make sure you call that number, one 844 win Remember, ladies and gentlemen, you are winning today. Pick up the phone. Let someone help you and lead you into the right direction. Once again, this is your Master Life Coach, Naditra Young. Thank you and have a great day. Yes, yes. yes. thank, thank you. you for all the viewers. Thank you for my brother. I believe uh, only Bishop Mobley is on. I think Prophet Francis dropped off and Pastor Craig dropped off. But we're going to end this live broadcast. Thank you so much, brothers. Y'all can make sure y'all can definitely stay on. We can talk. Thank you. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for these, your people, oh God. Father God, I pray right now, Lord, that something that was said or done on today that will help touch hearts and change lives, oh God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for Pastor Eldridge, oh God, that, Father God, that you will continue to bless him, keep him, encourage him in this very time, in this very hour, God. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for just doing exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, oh God. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.